Priest in Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire is a casting class that has a wide variety of spells but has a focus on healing and buffs of party members as well as debuffs of enemies. In addition, they have a few damaging abilities as well. Since most of the Priest's spells have casting times that are not suited to close combat, they will generally fulfill a ranged support role. However, because many of these spells have rather long durations, 60 seconds or so, they can buff first and then engage in melee and still be effective. Because they have such a wide variety of spells, they multi-class very well. Priests have five different types of spells generally. These are Condemnation, Restoration, Protection, Inspiration, and Punishment. Condemnation spells debuff enemies with negative status effects. Restoration spells heal the player or allies. Protection spells prevent the player or allies from taking damage. Inspiration spells buff allies, giving them positive status effects. And Punishment spells deal direct damage to enemies. Priests are somewhat unique in that they don't have subclasses that give any sort of negative effect, making them and Paladins the only ones, however these two classes have some restrictions when multiclassing with one another. Priests also gain some abilities of other classes, which is something few classes do. These abilities are gained automatically at each power level, and just exactly what they are depends on the subclass. Priests also have a unique ability called Holy Radiance, which they can use once per encounter. Holy Radiance does burn damage and weakens enemies, as well as heals friendlies for a mild amount in a huge AoE around the Priest. It also reduces the power level of enemies, which can be a lifesaver. Its strength increases or decreases based on your reputation to your chosen deity's alignment. In this section, we're going to take a look at the subclasses of the Priest and see why you might choose one of them over another. You must choose a subclass, as there isn't a no subclass option. However, as mentioned above, there are no penalties for doing so. Priest subclasses only affect the abilities you gain automatically at each level, so knowing what these are and what they do is very important when making a priest. Let's take a look at what the subclasses are and talk a bit about what sort of builds you can make with them. Barith. Barith priests follow the god of death and gain a handful of druid spells which follow the main theme of decay and corrosion. Take this subclass if you wish to have more debuffs and deal more corrode damage. Barith priests gain a greatsword for their spiritual weapon as well as a number of druid spells. The central theme of these spells are decay and death and they mostly debuff in an area or deal corrode damage in an AoE. However, they do gain Holy Meditation and Salvation of Time. The Greatsword does considerable damage that scales with your level, as well as plus 50% Crowed damage. Consider taking this subclass if you wish to be more offensive, or plan on using Greatswords. Many of the spells you gain as a Barith Priest have short range, which means that when multiclassing, you'll likely want to pick something that works well in closer proximity. I would suggest Fighter, Paladin, Monk, or even Wizard. Fighters give many bonuses that work well to both Defense and Offense. Discipline Strikes will increase your hit and crit chance and works with spells and weapon attacks. Warrior Stance can also increase your accuracy with the spells and attacks. Paladins have access to an ability called Sworn Enemy that increases your damage against the target by 20% and this includes damage by both weapons and spells. They also have increased accuracy from Exalted Focus and have many good abilities. Note that you can only multi-class with the Gold Pack Knights or the Shield Bearers of St. Elka if you choose this subclass. Monks have Swift Strikes, which increases the speed of attacking with weapons and casting with spells. Hellwalker Monks also gain Might when they are hit, further increasing the effectiveness of any healing you may do. Wizards have many enchanting spells that have short cast times that drastically increase defenses. This works well here because it allows you to buff and then focus on CCing and corroding enemies without fear of being killed quickly due to your closer proximity to enemies. Aeothus Aeothus Priests follow the God of Renewal and Light, gaining many spells that heal, protect, or revive their party members. Take this subclass if you wish to be more of a support class. Aeothus priests gain a flail for their spiritual weapon as well as lots of healing and protection spells, placing them squarely into the support role. The flail does excellent damage and adds plus 50% burn damage. Be sure to pump your might some if you play an Aeothus priest to take advantage of its effect on healing. You'll also want the practiced healer passive to further boost your effectiveness. Since Aeothus priests will spend a considerable amount of time casting, it is recommended that if they multi-class, they choose another class that doesn't. Chanter and Ranger would make good choices. Chanters can chant phrases while casting priest spells, further buffing their group, and they can add a few more spells to their library if they really want. Rangers can buff ranged combat and have an animal companion that can be effective while the priest casts. Magran. Magran priests follow the goddess of war and fire and gain many spells that deal burn damage. Select this subclass if you want to focus on dealing damage. Magran Priests gain a pistol and sword for their spiritual weapon as well as many spells including some from Wizard that deal burn damage. The pistol and sword both do plus 50% burn damage making them considerably powerful. This drops Magran Priests into the DPS role focusing on burn damage. Be sure to take Scion of Flame if you select the subclass to further increase your penetration with fire attacks. 
When multi-classing a Magran Priest, it's a good idea to look for classes that can facilitate better casting or perhaps mesh with the burn damage theme. Paladins, Wizards, and Rangers all work well. Paladins also focus heavily on burn damage, so can benefit from Scion of Flame. Wizards can provide buffs that are quick to cast, so the Priest is free to cast more fire spells. Rangers have an animal companion that can help engage enemies while you rain fire. Note that if you choose Paladin, you can only select the Bleak Walker's subclass. Skane. Skane priests follow the Quiet Slave, the god of hate and violence. They gain many roguelike spells that conceal the caster or debuff the enemy. Select this subclass if you intend to use weapons as a main source of damage. Skane priests have a stiletto and club for their spiritual weapon and gain a few rogue abilities as well as some damaging ones that also debuff enemies. The stiletto and club deal plus 50% pierce damage and scale with the priest's level. Minor Avatar not only gives plus 20% damage with weapons, but also increases your max health and all attributes by plus 5 for 30 seconds, making it one of the best buffs in the game. Consider multiclassing if you choose this subclass to pick up some active abilities that are weapon related. When multiclassing a Skane, really any martial class will do, but there is some synergy with Rogue because of the Rogue abilities you gain. Because you get Shadowing Beyond, Skanes are the only other class that can reliably go invisible, which allows you to spend the Rogue's Guile on its attacks rather than stealth. The downside is that you don't gain this ability until much later in the game, so you cannot use this combo for some time. Whale Whale Priests follow the God of Dreams and gain several illusion spells from the wizard class. Select the subclass if you wish to focus on crowd control and debuffs, or wish to fulfill the tank role. Whale Priests gain a rod for their spiritual weapon and gain many illusion spells from the wizard class. Many of these spells buff the caster with serious defense, such as Lengrath's Displaced Image, which makes this subclass suitable for tanking. The rod does plus 50% shock damage and again scales with a priest level. Consider multiclassing the whale with another tank class in order to gain some active abilities and passives that it would benefit from. When multiclassing a whale priest, consider taking paladin, rogue, fighter, or monk for their tankiness. Paladins gain many abilities that give incredible defense such as exalted endurance, mental fortress, clear head, reinforcing exhortation, and righteous soul. This makes for an extremely resistant character and a really tough one to kill. Note that you can only choose Bleak Walkers or Dakazi Paladini if you choose this subclass. Street Fighter Rogues gain benefits from being flanked and bloodied, so are an ideal choice for a tank. They can counterattack enemies with their repost passive if they dodge attacks, which works nicely with the high deflection illusion spells give. Unbroken Fighters can engage one extra enemy, gain plus one armor from using a shield, and gain tons of penetration on disengagement attacks. They have lots of abilities that increase their defense, and some that increase their offense as well, like Overbearing Guard. Monks gain wounds when they take damage, which gives them an extra resource pool with which to use abilities from. They can also increase their action speed, which benefits attacking as well as casting. The last thing we're going to cover here is attributes and races and how they affect the priest. The game recommends Might and Dexterity and highly recommends Intellect and Resolve. Might increases damage and healing, while Dexterity increases action speed, which affects casting. Intellect increases the duration and AoE radius of many of the priest's abilities, and Resolve helps keep them alive because although they are not in melee range necessarily, they will need to be much closer than other casters to use their spells effectively. Just exactly how much of these you should have depends on the subclass you selected, and I will make my recommendations along with race here. Barath. Prioritize Intellect, Might, and Resolve. Intellect will increase the duration of the negative effects of the Barath Priest as well as widen their AoE, so it's top priority here. Might is just good for straight-up damage, and Resolve will help keep you alive. Human or Godlike or Elf all work here. Aethys. Prioritize Might, Intellect, and Resolve. Since Aethys priests have a higher focus on healing than other priests, they will benefit more from higher might values. Intellect helps with duration and AoE size. Human, godlike, or elf are our solid choices. Magran. Prioritize might, perception, and intellect. Magran priests are going to be slinging fire spells with regularity, so you'll want to focus on might for damage and perception to make sure they connect. Intellect helps with AoE radius. Godlike or Amala both work well here. Skain. Prioritize might, intellect, and resolve. Skain priests want to hit hard, so need high might. Intellect helps with duration of their buffs and debuffs, and Resolve helps keep them alive. Human is a good choice here. Whale. Prioritize Resolve, Constitution, and Intellect. Whale Priests are more likely to tank than other Priest subclasses, and so need attributes that help them survive. Intellect helps with durations. If you can spare points, Might doesn't hurt either, as it boosts both damage and healing. Dwarf works well here. Final Tips. Each Priest has a different spiritual weapon, which does considerable damage versus a normal one of the same type, and they scale with your level. Pay attention to what these are and use them to best results. Although you can swap to a different weapon set, you cannot change out your spiritual weapon with your normal ones while active. This means if you want to get the most of them, you'll need to pick the passive that benefits the weapon style. One-handed, two-handed, two-weapon, or weapon and shield. You can use a shield with a flail. 
Several priest subclasses have spells from other classes, which allows the priest to have abilities from three different ability trees when multiclassing. This is one of its biggest strengths because some combinations are available to you that would not otherwise be possible. For example, because you can get Landgrass Displaced Image and Mirrored Image on a Whale Priest, you could select this subclass instead of the Wizard to tank with. This allows for you to use other Priest buffs that are really good, but still get some of the best buffs that Wizards have. Positioning is very important to Priests because many of their buffs and damaging abilities have a range of around 5 meters. This means they generally won't be on the back lines, but somewhere between melee and your other ranged units. Because of this, it is likely they will take more damage than other ranged characters, which is why Resolve is highly recommended. You might want to consider wearing some heavy armor as well, just to ensure you don't get beat up too much. Lastly, Intellect is very, very important to the Priest because most of the spells they can cast have an AoE that goes with it, and you want these to be as effective as possible by being as large as they can. Make sure you invest a considerable amount and look for equipment that not only increases Intellect, but also boosts AoE radius. Stay tuned for more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire class guides as we cover all 11 classes as well as character creation. What did you think of the guide? Was it helpful? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.